So, Sister Sumaya, tell me how uh, you took that journey. What triggered it? What made you make that journey in the first place? Well, I must go back very far in my young year to tell you everything. Um, I was born Christian, Baptist, uh, and I follow... In France? In France, yes. Uh, my parents were Christian. And uh, I even went to catechism to learn the Bible, to learn the life of Jesus. And even young as I was, like nine years old, many questions in my head. Who, From that young age? That young age, I start to confuse. Because uh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, strange couple, Yanni. G Mary got a baby by herself, and she's married with Joseph, and she has Jesus. And, Jesus, Jesus. and Joseph is, is not the father. Joseph is not the father, <laughs> and Jesus is the son of God. Even little, uh, I think this is very ambiguous, and it's mm. not normal situation. Then I continue to learn, and then I do my first communion, which is a small communion that we accept uh, to pray uh, Jesus and as son of God. And then I arrive to the next communion, the solennal one. And the sisters, uh, I learned from the sisters, they say, you don't need to do that one because in fact you don't believe in what uh, you have learned. I was quite shocked. Who, who were see. these sisters? Who? Sister nuns, nuns. Oh, the nuns? Yes, ah. the nuns, the sisters, we call it. They told you, 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 did, you don't believe in it? Yes, the sister told me, it's not necessary you do that big uh, communion because you will not believe in what you learned. So I say, what is that? So I what's spend, the point? What's the point? I spent uh, years to learn, and then I arrived to my final communion. Nothing. Don't do that. It's a mess if you do that, and blah, blah. So I quit that school. Definitely. How old were you then? I was 11. Mm. We do that communion at uh, 11 years old. And I continue. But all in me was not happy about that. Mm. All in me said there is something not normal behind that. And even my personal feeling about that world around me was very confused. Like, why should I be like everyone? Why should I cannot express myself? Uh, I mean, something uh, deeply was missing. But I was in that circle of life, Yanni. I, do, I did my study. I went to college, to lycée, to university. Then I got married. I got my kids. And all the time, unhappiness, mm. depression. Uh, I mean, sensation that my world is not this one. Sensation that uh, I have something better to do than living in material world, only buying to be happy. What's buying to be happy? Mm. One minute. And after I was not happy. Because I understand better now, but I needed something more deep, some spirituality, something I can trust 100% in it. And it reached the point that uh, my couple with my husband didn't go well because I was not well, because my depression... So your marriage didn't continue? I was married uh, at least 20 years, but mm. 20 hard years, mm. fighting with myself, uh, falling every time on depression, getting better, falling on depression. I did anorexia, also I fell to 30 kilo because being not well. Each time, uh, my friends say, wear this clothes, you will be better. Put some makeup, you will be better. Nothing sent me better, yet. nothing. I was like lost. Lost because in that world, that Christian world, I, in fact, no one believe church are getting empty. After I left uh, this Catholic uh, school, and I didn't go to church every Sunday because we have to go every Sunday. I didn't go. My parents also left little by little the costume of, the costume of that faith. So they were becoming less religious. Less religious. Mm. Like everybody. Any. Who is going on Sunday to the church? Nearly no one. No one. So, for example, Esther, 
We used to fast on the Friday of Esther. Just not to eat meat. Not, we can eat vegetables, we can eat everything, fish, but no meat. Little by little, we start to eat little meat, and then again, and then again. And it's not only my family, but all families were, little by little, losing their faith. So in, in that context, which is general context in Europe, that Catholicism is decreasing and, mashallah, Islam is increasing, is that people lost their faith. Where were you? Which city in France? Uh, I was in Grenoble. I was born in Grenoble and live in a little village uh, near Grenoble, Sassnage. So there were not uh, many Muslims around you? No. The one who came is Algerian people who came to uh, work in France. Mm. And after they bring their family and they, they were living, I mean, apart from the village. On their own? Yes, on their own because mm. they were very badly seen by the mm. village uh, people. You know. So, uh, I mean, Muslim, I don't have a good pictures of Muslim at this time. Because for us, it was a world apart. Who are they? They are barbarian. They are someone coming from, we don't know where. I mean, the mentality of village. You know. mm. So after, when I got married, I moved to Marseille, which was a big city and with many kind of ethnicity. Lots of Muslims. Too. Muslims, <laughs> Jewish, uh, mm. I mean, everyone there, it supports. So, uh, multicultural. Multicultural city, mm. yes. So I start to see, but Muslims, and you were badly seen too. Mm. <laughs> so they have their areas, and Jewish have their areas, and finally, uh, Marseillean people have their areas. I saw only that. So I stayed 22 years in that town. Uh, 22 years, very hard. In Marseille? Very hard for me. Mm. Because uh, searching myself, because not happy with uh, what I was living every day, without having that spiritual uh, attachment to something. I was saying, Catholics, what is Catholicism? I say, I look to the Pope, he's living in a big palace with gold, with everything around him. He's protected, everything. And I mean, us, in what we should believe, in that material Christian world represented by the Pope, or in our everyday life. Me, I was searching for someone that is like me and who represent a faith who, who understand us. But the only model I have is a hierarchy, priest, evêque, cardinals, pope, that manage us. And that hierarchy full of money. Yeah, sometimes you wonder when you read about Jesus Christ and how his life was, where all this came from, this hierarchy, where did it come from? Yeah, I never understood. Yeah. I never... I, I mean, uh, since I accept Islam, I never understood so, that story. What actually triggered it? What happened in Marseille? What happened in Marseille? Uh, in Marseille, um, yani, my couple was very down because my searching of myself. And the last struggle I have to face is big anorexia. I went to hospital mm. for that. And I said to my husband, well, what life should I have after? My question was that. Should I come back every time to anorexia, to depression, to everything? And luckily, I have money on my side, so I decided first to leave. I left. I say I'm going to search job in European countries. I choose Slovenia, because for me, Slovenia was a country with green area, with more, I mean, uh, people living in more healthy uh, world. Mm. And... Uh, I think they are more close together. And uh, for me, little country to understand myself better was good. But what, why, why, why Slovenia? I mean, did you know someone from there? Before? I used to know someone. Well, I changed my job. Uh, I learned a new job. I became pastry chef at the time. I was secretary uh, before and I changed my job because I get bored about my job. So I changed and I met someone during a training that say, maybe there is opportunity in that country. Mm. I checked the country, I look if it was good. I say, okay, let's start. My husband was agree. 
Let's start there. And for me, it was like... You went together as a family? No, I went alone. On your own? I left alone. Uh, with the agreement of my husband mm. and uh, my kids. I have three kids, at least, who have 27 now and uh, 20 years old. Um, they were agreed, so I went. And little by little, my couple more and more, because me, I start to travel from Slovenia. I mean, I start to go to Bosnia. I start to hear Hazan. And I start to mm. have the view of Islam. After that travel to Bosnia... You were traveling part of your job or for, no, your, uh, to, uh, for tourism? Free. Tourism, ah. because I wanted to discover the countries who formed the old Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. and which completely exploded a few years before. So I started by Croatia, Serbia, and then I went to Bosnia. Bosnia was my last. And it's here in Bosnia that I heard my first azan. I will never forget that. You went to Sarajevo? I went to Sarajevo, uh, and I do all the travel by bus till Mostar. And it's there that I hear my first azan. And I can, I will never forget it because it brings warmness in my heart. Just by hearing Just it? Just by hearing. Although you didn't understand what it was? Exactly. At the first, I didn't understand exactly what it expressed. But it warms my heart so much. I don't know that I say, I must go deeper. Why this song warm my heart so much? Why am I here? I was like alone in a very small area and the mosque was up mm -hmm. in a little mountain. And I heard that guy calling with the reflection of the voice, of the echo of the, the voice echo, yes. <laughs> uh, with the mountain. It was just amazing for me. And I was alone. And I was like, not moving, hearing that till the end, hearing that. And I say, wow, being maybe something good, Yanni, something uh, that happened to me good in this world. And then I searched because Bosnia is Islam. So I searched, I went to internet when I was back and I say, next travel, Istanbul. <laughs> so I plan my next travel. And they are very similar. I mean, Sarajevo, I've just recently yes, been because, to Sarajevo. Yes, uh, because it's, it's very like Turkish way. It's he... like you are in Istanbul. Yes, right? yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I plan my next travel to, to Istanbul. And my family was saying, you should not go there because you will be insecure and blah, blah, everything. What you can think about a Muslim country when you are in Europe? Mm. <laughs> it's common, Yanni. I think feeling. people are killing each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They think that you are not secure in a Muslim country. It is a common view. Yeah. Now, this is about the late 90s. When was this exactly? So, uh, I left... Be because uh, the war ended in... I left in 2013. Ah. And uh, I lived one year in Slovenia. And I left Slovenia for Turkey. Uh, in 2014, mm. the first April. Uh, so let's go back to my Istanbul. first travel in yeah. Istanbul. So I decided, I fixed the date, bought the tickets, uh, everything. And then I arrived in Istanbul, I start to visit. And I went to Sulimanie. And in Sulimanie, you will not believe what happened to me. I always cover myself. First, I always cover myself in Istanbul. Put the hijab, like, not like this, but mm. a simple one to respect. And then I went to Suleimani. I was in the garden of Suleimani. I don't know if you know Suleimani. Yes, I know, yes. Uh, I was in the garden and I was quite alone, maybe two other people, and they were birds. And suddenly I feel pushed by the back, just to fall. And the bird pushed me. It was incredible. A bird pushed you? A bird pushed me like fall because I have my two hands like this. I was falling and the bird pushed me. On the moment I say, why this bird pushed me? He's got many places beside me. It was empty place. Why he pushed me? And then I went back home, but all that in my head. Mm. And so I decide to go, back, to go back. I have to go back for my work in Slovenia. Then I say, I should go back another time. Then I go back another time to Istanbul, 
And I learned in uh, Sultan Ahmed uh, Jami. Mm. They have information for tourism and uh, about the mosque and about Islam. Between the two travel, I, I continue to, to read and to have information about Islam. And that one of my first azan was still in my heart. So I went to that information and the girl told me something. I don't have to have hijab, but I put hijab on myself. And she said, you are very beautiful like this, she told me. <laughs> and I was the only person at, the, at that time hearing her information. So I heard, had heard, and it works in my head. I say, mashallah, I start to hear the truth. The truth is coming to me, little by little. I went back, continue. I bought the Quran. I bought one Quran in French at that travel. So you started learning. I started learning the Quran. I went back to see someone because uh, I make friendship with uh, the hotel. It was a nice hotel and I make friendship with that family. So they say, come back, come back. So I come another time. Yeah. And I was more and more decided to do my Shahada. And the fourth time, I go to that information and I say, please, I want to do my shahada, please help me. And I went to Sultan Ahmed and in five minutes, I did my shahada. Oh. She helped me to do that. Subhanallah. And already before, because before I went, I saw there is few Muslims in Slovenia. Uh, they came from Bosnia and they, they have no mosque. Actually, at that time, they have no mosque, just a little center. And I say, I may, I, maybe I can get converted there because I was ready. And the Imam said, you need one year program for that. Oh, really? Yes, he said that to me. So I say, one year program for what? Because I'm ready, I feel my you heart ready. You had already been in the process. Yes, I am oh. in the process. My process mm. is finished, I'm sure. I'm ready to accept Islam, mashallah. I found the truth, <laughs> why one year waiting? And I say... That's a very unusual reaction. Yeah, I was, because, I was very surprised but because he should be happy. Yes, he should welcome <laughs> he should you. should do it immediately, at least. <laughs> Muslims usually are excited about someone coming to Islam. You have to learn, you have to go to women's session and they will teach you. But I say, I'm not good in Slovenian language. How can mm. I, I, I learn all this? Mm. My heart is ready, I told him. I, he said, wait, okay, I left that. And I say, let's go back to Istanbul. That's when I go back my fourth time. And I did it in Istanbul. Mm. I don't have to wait. I was frightened. She asked me, wait, you have to learn, blah, blah, but no, <laughs> at least. Now, you've done this after having been alone for a while. Yes. So when your family knew about, about it, what happened? Uh, what? My family, uh, I didn't tell them first. Because uh, when I came back from uh, doing my having done my shahada, one decision I have to make is, should I stay in Europe and, mm. or should I go in Muslim country to be free to live my faith freely? Mm. In Slovenia, few Muslims, no mosque. Uh, I mean, very bad condition to, and the Imam, what he told me, doesn't mean for me good condition also to- Not very increase. encouraging. Yes, mm. uh, he doesn't have intelligent speech for me, so I say maybe the next will not be good, Yanni. So I decided to, to leave Slovenia for Turkey. For good? Yes, mm. yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, my decision was very easy to take because I say, what I have in Europe, my copper is going down. I don't want to go back to that life. I'm happy now. I found the truth. I have a faith. I can trust in something in, in Allah, in Allah. Mm. Not in Jesus, the Son of Allah, not in the Trinity, not in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I mean, all that cancel. I have only one person, Allah, mm. to worship, which was wonderful because now all the things become, became clear in my head. I mean, it was, uh, besides accepting the faith, it was a revelation for many questions I have in my head that became clear at the moment. And I say, what a mess I was in that world. Learning for what and learning what, not the truth, finally. So my decision was taken very uh, quickly. But you didn't feel the burden of your social commitments with your family, with your 
country. No, at least I put my family aside mm. because I say now I, I have to do something for myself. Mm. I have to live my life. Now that I find the truth, I will not wait for their acceptance or whatever. It is my kader. It is my uh, mm. way of life, my way in Islam. They don't have to interfere. No one has to interfere. And I decided. I, gave, I used to have a flat, everything. I gave everything to my friend in Slovenia. And I left Slovenia with only two suitcases. Two suitcases. Here to Turkey? Yes. <laughs> no home, no job. Just few friends in Sultanahmet, the one who helped me to do my, to do my shahada, and few others. So I have to, to find everything. I settled in mm. hotel for a few days. Then before that friend, uh, Sultan Ahmed, uh, that's where Shem Sitin uh, they, uh, happened. And he, she told me, you should write to that man. He maybe can help you for home, for job, and so on. I wrote, but I have no answer of him. <laughs> so I continued to write. And finally, I, I met him. I was already in Turkey. So he find me a job. Instead of doing cakes, I was ironing, but it was a job. Mm. And uh, mostly I was so happy. Even poor, very poor. I was so happy. I mean, for me, it was like a new life, newborn. I was a newborn for everything. So now you've moved to Turkey after yeah. you've uh, made the Shahada. Mm. You settled down, mm. you found a job and a new life. I found a job, but a little job. I, I have to find a flat, but I have nothing in my flat. I used to sleep on carpet mm. and uh, I stay like this, but I stay firm in my belief and uh, my goals. And Allah bless me with a full time job after my real job. Mm. I, I was pastry chef in bakery in Ishantashi uh, after, during four years. I thank Allah for that because he blessed me. I did my shahada and blessed me so much after. Mm. They make me coming here in Turkey, having a home, having a job. And now I settled in Turkey forever. <laughs> I hope, inshallah. I think the beginning is always uh, difficult. Uh, and this is what yes. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Ankabut. Uh, the meaning of the verse is that do people think that they will be left alone when they say we believe? They will have to be tested. Those before them were tested. So probably that was some but sort I, of a test. I, I stay firm uh, mm. and I continue uh, to stay firm, Yanni, because uh, I'm so happy. Allah blessed me so much with many things in my life. I enjoy many things, many things I see. It's a blessing from Allah. I understand everything now. It's wonderful. So what, what happened to your family? So my family, I wrote to my husband and I say, I, accept, I have accepted Islam. And I send you back the key of the, the flat in Marseille because I have one key. I send you back everything. Now I will settle in Turkey and uh, we have to manage the divorce and so on. But oh. this, is, this is another issue which continue nowadays. But I have to face that issue, but I will face it. Mm. Yani, uh, because in, in, in Catholicism, there is no divorce, right? We are married, so we have div to divorce. Mm. We have to divorce. Yeah, we have to divorce for him, let him free, and me. I cannot be married. Being Muslim, I cannot be married with a Christian. Mm. And by the way, our couple was finished, so we have nothing to do. And you've been living alone for so long. Uh, yes. But what about uh, what about the children? Are you still communicating with no, them? No, they cut communication when they learn that I accept Islam. Oh, really? Yes. There is now six years that I didn't communicate with them. Mm. I have one sister in my born city. Uh, which I, who I communicate with, uh, actually. And I told her that I have accepted Islam, everything. But she already married with a Turkish man, so <laughs> she, ah, she, she has more facilities to understand my view. Even if I think for her it's a little hard to understand how I can pass the gate and go mm. to Islam. Oh, she hasn't converted? No, 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 no. no. Because uh, I say she's married, she's living with that guy. Because in my country, it's a law to, to live with, uh, without being married. You know? yes, I mean, yes. She got one kid from that guy. And then it makes more easy for me to explain her my way. Mm. But my children, they cut definitively. 
That's very sad. I went back to Marseille. I say maybe I can see them. I ask for them, and they say now we are going forward. We don't want to see you, and we don't want to talk to you. You know that thing uh, really amazes me because in in the liberal West people talk about freedom of choice, <laughs> but when it, when people choose something like this, they are immediately sanctioned. This is not really in mind. <laughs> this mm. is just a utopic idea. <laughs> mm. Some minds are still locked. Mm. Uh, me, uh, I didn't change. I accept Islam, but I'm still their mother. Mm. And, and I will... And they are not strangers because they are Catholic and me now I am Muslim. They are my kids. They are my brood. I will tell you even something, that uh, my biggest son, we are, which have at least uh, 24 years at the time, it was the time when it happened in um, that uh, newspaper, they killed 12 people saying Allah Akbar, Charlie Hebdo. Ah, yes. Huh. I came to Marseille a few times after, and uh, I would like to meet him. I text him, and then his father came instead to see me, and he told me, Ludovic, it was his name. Ludovic told me, should I call the police because my mother is Muslim and she's coming in France? Maybe she can have a bomb. The blood of my blood is saying that. So what should I think? What should I think? I was so shocked. I say, how oh, it's possible my son is talking to me like this? Is it a crime to accept Islam to change the faith? If one of these days he decides to be Hinduist or whatever, should I reject him? No. I am his mother. He is my son. They are the and it reached that mm. point. It reached that point. And my, my ex-husband said, I stopped him to go to the police. Wow. Saying, she's your mother. You see, the way I see it is that these are victims, really victims of the media. so many years of oh, washing this, brain, disinformation brain washing. by the media. Yeah. Yes, totally. And the right side, the political right side, is very increasing in France, making people more radicalism in racism. I mean. Yeah, I think France in Europe is a very special case because mm. this uh, prejudice is so clear and so deep compared, for instance, to Britain. Mm. I've uh, interviewed several brothers and sisters from Britain who have embraced Islam. And it is rare uh, that you come across something like this. Usually they, they keep going with their families. Yeah, but it was not a, it was mm. not a case. So I, I said to myself, after a few times these things go out of my head, that he said that, I say, this is your life. I spent 20 years to educate them, to make them adult now. I will think myself. I don't have to make any discount of the fact that I accept Islam. Of course, it's your salvation, isn't it's, it? It's my faith now. Mm. I'm so happy. It's their problem if they don't talk to me. Me, I'm open. I say to my ex-husband, my door is open all the time for them. They are my kids. But since six years, no, no message, contact. nothing. Now, about my friend, my close friend, some accept, some were very worried because I went in Muslim country, they say, Valérie, don't worry. <laughs> if something happened to you, you just have to come back and I will welcome <laughs> you. But I say, look at me, I have a phone number, I have WhatsApp, I, I have Facebook, I have everything, I'm free. Don't have to worry for me. And little by little, I give books to them, I make little dawah, little by little to them. And their minds start to change. Well, that's good. <laughs> yes, I try my best to make dawah mm. all the time I can, but Slowly, because you don't have to hurt them brutally. <laughs> and it's mm. little by little. Well, Sister Sumaya, Valerie, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. much. Thank you.